Hey everybody, Sean from Movie Assault here, and it's time for a movie review. And I've got, this time out, Distorted, 2018 film starring Christina Ricci. And despite what it says here, not starring John Cusack. Uh, it also stars Brendan Fletcher. And this is a techno thriller, or attempts to be a techno thriller, about uh, a smart apartment building or a smart condo playing with the emotions of a woman with bipolar disorder, and that woman is Lauren Curran, played by Christina Ricci. At the beginning of the film, her character hallucinates, and she thinks there's somebody in her apartment. She's really stressed out. Apparently, it's happened quite a few times before. So her husband, Russell, played by Brendan Fletcher, uh, he decides they're going to move to this high-tech smart apartment building or smart condo called The Pinnacle. And The Pinnacle prides itself on its security. They have cameras everywhere. They have a really tight-knit community of really wealthy residents, uh, just high-tech security out the yin-yang. And uh, so she reluctantly at first decides, okay, we'll go ahead and move there. Then she's looking forward to it after she meets the people that live there. She meets a few neighbors uh, and she starts to feel comfortable until she begins seeing things on the TV that Russell can't see. She starts hearing voices. Uh, other tenants in the building are humming Beautiful Dreamer for some strange reason, and nobody seems to know why. Russell thinks she's just having more episodes and thinks she needs to up her dose of medication and see her therapist. But she's convinced that this building has something to do with the way she's feeling, the way what she's seeing, what she's hearing. And so she consults a neighbor who just happens to have had a father who was an expert in subliminal messages. She learns a little bit about that from him. And then she goes online and meets the character played by John Cusack, um, who gives her some more information and tips her in on some things about the government and the government's use of subliminal messages to control people. And he may be the only person who can help her solve this mystery. That's all I'll say about the plot. Uh, what I'll say about the movie is that I'm glad I only paid a dollar for it. Uh, it is pretty bad, um, pretty much from the top down. Um, the acting is okay. Christina Ricci does what she can with this script. She turns in a fairly decent performance. Uh, Brendan Fletcher isn't given much to do other than sigh a lot and look upset John Cusack is in it for all of 10 minutes. He's in a handful of scenes. Why he has second billing, well, I know why he has second billing to make it look like, oh, this is a Christina Ricci, John Cusack film. But they're on screen together three, four, maybe five times total. Um, his character is rather hilarious because he's an expert on things, hacking and the dark web, and he claims he's a journalist. Uh, but when John Cusack delivers the character's lines, he acts like he doesn't really understand what he's saying, which isn't real convincing. Um, the script is all over the place. The premise of the film is rather interesting. The fact that you've got this smart building that may or may not be playing with someone's emotions and, and mind, uh, with mind control and stuff. But uh, the script, which was written by Arnie Olson, who is also responsible for writing scripts like Cop and a Half, starring Burt Reynolds, uh, it just it just has too many wait what moments. There are just way too many things that happen in this film that just aren't believable. For example, and I again I won't spoil anything, but Christina Ricci's character goes to the local coffee shop to get on the internet to do some research about subliminal messages, and she gets in this chat room and she meets somebody to talk about. Uh, subliminal messages who just happens to have all this information she needs and the internet's kind of a big place it may in fact be worldwide well it just so happens that this small little countryside town that they've moved to outside of this big city happens to be where john cusack's character lives what a coincidence uh, and it's just things like that that are sort of littered throughout the movie that kind of just make you when you get to the end of the film uh and you everything is resolved you just kind of shrug your shoulders and go, yeah, all right, whatever. Because none of it is believable. The characters are not, you're not sympathetic to or empathetic with the characters. You don't really care what happens to them. Uh, when you finally find out what's kind of driving uh, Christina Ricci's depression, 
it doesn't hit you like it should. The direction is just mediocre. I, I, I really think the best thing I can compliment this movie for is having some really excellent locations. Uh, at the end of the film, there are some really interesting um, locations that they do some shooting at. So I have to give a tip of the hat to the location scout and the cinematographer who does the best he can to make this movie at least look decent for the most part. But overall, I have to give this movie a one and a half out of ten. It's really that bad. So steer clear of Distorted, which features Christina Ricci and not so much John Cusack. Um, I'll give you a look at the back of the box. So you can take a look at the credits. Um, but really, take a, take a hard pass on Distorted. If you don't, I can't give you your hour and a half of your life back. So there you go. That's my review of Distorted from 2018. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did and you want to see more reviews of this type, please click the like button on this video. And of course, please subscribe if you haven't done so already. And click the notification bell to get updates when I upload a new video. Thanks again for watching, everybody. Take it easy.